So for those of you who haven't been here before, <laughs> I'm Susan Lerbrock from the Lobby of Hope Theater, and this is Watch Your Work, and this is a, a play, and you've been selected, carefully selected to participate in this play. So we're gonna we're gonna do it together. We're gonna do the action together, and we're gonna work for 20 minutes, and then we're going to do the dialogue of the play together. And the dialogue consists of you asking me questions about your work and your creative process. So, what's your name? Adam. Oh, Adam. Adam. He's, he's here. So he's like the first person in the universe. So, um, Adam. So what we'll do, you know, so your work, your creative process. So, Adam, as everybody else here knows, and if you try to ask me a question about my work, I'm gonna make it not you. I look forward to it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So where the, the me and the title is actually you. So that's what we do. And and what else? It's a play, it's a free writing class. We're gonna work for 20 minutes and we're gonna talk for as long as Howell Brown lets us. And those of you who are out there in the interwebs, we have Matt behind the camera and Angie behind the sound thing uh, board. And uh, I'm just gonna tell us how to get in touch with uh, us, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in at home. Um, if you are watching this right now from your house, your laptop, wherever, um, after 20 minutes or up, wow, there's something moving, something really loud. They're in hard hats. Yeah. They're in hard hats. Yeah. They're really working. I just have a hard hat. Do you want a pink one like that? Yeah, I got you. We'll get a pink hard hat for, for <laughs> next time. Um, tune in next week. Uh, so what's going to happen is after the 20 minutes, you guys can get on Twitter and you can tweet us your questions. Um, you can find us at uh, SLP, Watch Me Work SLP, um, which is on Twitter, uh, and you can also use the hashtag HowlRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, and everybody is mouthing that along with me, so if you didn't catch that, it's hashtag HowlRound, and we will take your questions and give it to SLP, and there you go. And I will make up the answer. That's perfect. So, thanks. Okay, so we're going to start the timer. And I think going to be on the timer also? Yep. Great. Okay. I'm going to get behind the desk because it might take like... Oh, Ryan. Ryan's here again. How are you doing, Ryan? Uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay.
I'm not gonna do that. But yeah. Let me do your, and add your contribution, because that's really what it's about, making your contribution. Well, good question, though. Great answer. Adam. <laughs> Did we have an E with that one? Oh, we've got a question from German. Um, from German? Yes. His name's German Munoz? German. I'm I sorry know. if I. I speak German, so how do you spell it? Well, it's, it's uh, M U N O Z. That's his last name. M U N O Z. Munoz? Munoz? German, his name is German. His first name's German. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so perhaps he's not a German. He is a German, but he's Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Hi, we love German. Yeah, we do, actually. He asks, uh, how do you get to know your characters? Do you get to know them before you write or as you write? Right. I would say, I would say once you get to know their characters as they're writing. Right? It's like dating. I mean, everything. So German, everything I'm going to say is either like dating or what I say in class or Spider-Man. But not necessarily dating Spider-Man. He just says his oh. name's pronounced Hairman. Oh, Herman. 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 Yes. Herman. Herman. There we go. I'm so sorry, Herman. I mean, it's with the, it's with the it, that's not what, how it looked on Twitter. Okay. Herman. 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 It's Deutsch. Yeah, he's Deutsch. I have a very close friend who's German. <laughs> um, so anyway, but I don't think it's that person who's texting. Anyway. Um, so I would suggest getting to know your characters while you're writing. You know, you do a little preliminary work before you write and then you jump in and get to know them that way. Like dating, right? So you get to, someone says, I have this wonderful person for you to meet, right? And they tell you all about them. But what is that really going to tell you? Like, a little bit. Or if you do the um, online dating thing, you're going to the swipe thing, you know. You can only know so much about someone before you actually get intimate with them. And that's what you do when you write. You're getting intimate with your characters. So you can sort of have a little character sketch, like he's 35 and doesn't bathe and lives in a yurt, has a goat, like that. Um, and then, you know, and his name is Joe. And then you start to do things to get to know Joe. Um, you can do things like interview your character, which is a good way to do it. You just talk to him or her, like as you would you know, in an interview situation with somebody. And um, then you kind of reach the point where you jump in and you give them a story and you, or you find out their story and you kind of move them along. So it's a combination of both. But characters are going to reveal themselves through action. I think someone said that like Aristotle or something. Probably. Like Aristotle. One of those DWMs that we love so much. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Just like, just like Ryan is just like going. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. How you doing? I don't have a question. You don't have a question? Did you write those things down on those pieces of paper? Like I, I did not. Oh, you did. I wanted to be like super honest. That's great. That's why I don't have a question. Well, I, mean, okay. I, I had. I knew what I was going to write, but I did never actually write it. How am I? Well, I guess I was going to do that. I gained last week. When you're writing something autobiographical, do you step? Wait, there's a funny way to check out. Um, right, right. On top of her, on top of her. Right. When you're writing, when you write, when one writes something that's autobiographical, how could one, how might one step outside of it? That's yeah. what you're asking. But that's such an interesting question you should ask me. Because I would suggest you step into it. Get in it. You're like so outside of it. You're having like an out of body experience. If we know Ryan, Ryan comes here and we love and adore you. And I keep saying, get into it. Step in it. You, you know, you've got like, you like the shit, the it of it. Sorry, the it of it, the shit of it. Like step in it. Like go ahead. Step in it. You know, I would I wouldn't say get outside of it for you. Like get some perspective. You know? Tell the story. Take a chance. 
you know? I mean, write like a really bad draft. Have you ever written like a really, 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 really bad draft or something? I'm sure, yes. Yes. Write, so do that. Write a really bad draft. Like, impress us with your shitty writing. No, I'm serious. This is how professionals work. I know, because I'm a professional. I've been a professional for a long time. And this is how we work. You know, the, the people who want it to be like perfect and right all the time, you know, they don't get so much done. You know what I'm saying? But those of us who are professionals who do it for a living, who, you know, our, our rent and whatnot depend on producing work, we write shitty, 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 and a uh, wonderful actors in it, Michael Crane, Michael Forsty, and Dan Brown, the writer also. Lovely. And I was like, yeah! And she's like, why are you so happy? I'm like, yeah, your work is great, but I just finished the shittiest draft I've ever written. So I was like, yeah, that's how you do it. And then you make it better. Get in it. I mean, you don't have to write all note cards or whatever I suggested, but, but, Get in it. Yeah, I think you're, you're spending a lot of time thinking about it and outside of it already. We know you. We love you. We want you to write it. Okay. And keep, keep coming back because we love to have you here. No, yeah, no, that's for yeah, real. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you have tips on internalizing positive? I, I don't know about other people here, but I'm really good at internalizing and rationalizing negative feedback. But with positive feedback, I have a real tendency to rationalize in the other direction. So if somebody were to say, man, your song sucks, man, you'd like totally take that to heart. Oh, yeah, it's like, oh. Oh, well, yeah, of course you totally, because I fucking wrote it. Right, right, right. And if somebody said, man, your song is like, ah, it's so great. You'd be like, who are you talking to? I'm not even here. Or I'll be like, you're, you're my friend. Well, you're my friend, so. Yeah, I just came, I just okay. came to the mm. Mm. So this, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know your mom and dad. I don't know how we were raised. But it does sound how like it's, it's a, you know what? How much time is now? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, keep coming and we'll talk about it. I mean, this is a, this is a, this is a, a problem that started, I would guess, a long time ago. So, you know, okay, so, but that's okay. I mean, that, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so there are a couple things. One, um, I tell my students, I don't know if you're, you know, get used to hearing praise. It's a muscle, it's a habit that you have to get in the habit of, right? You have to train yourself to hear praise, okay? But, I mean, what's good is that you're not one of those people who cannot hear negative feedback. Those people are called assholes. <laughs> So you're not one of those people, yay, hooray, okay? But you are someone who's like, can't hear positive feedback. So what you need um, mm, 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 is a, uh, probably need to bombard yourself with positive feedback, that's one way to do it. Just like something that somebody says is good, you have to then maybe take to somebody that you don't know so well, and have them look at it, and give your, give feedback and just say just give me the positive feedback and also you have to start talking to yourself in a different way because what happens is that you're only like maybe Hermann is German and he speaks German so he has German in his head along with English so but most of us like how many languages do you speak okay so one and a half so you've got this you've got these languages in, in your head this is one language right you don't have another way of talking to yourself. You learn this from being very small. It's not a bad, it's not because of bad parenting. It's just the way it happens. No big deal. You have to create another groove in your mind, right? Do you have a meditation practice? Uh, it's sporadic. Sporadic. Yeah. So, because what happens in 
meditation is you regroup your mind. Like a record. I know some of you don't know what a record is. LP, you know, I mean, they're coming back. Vinyl is like, get ready for a show called Vinyl. Okay, so the vinyl, right? Yes. Those grooves. What you want to do is create new grooves in your mind where these positive things can live. And we're not talking about positive things that are BS and unwarranted and stupid. We're talking about real positive, real just basic positive things. You have to develop an ear for them. Like, can you carry a tune? Okay, some people cannot carry a tune because some people are what they call like tone deaf or they have to speak it. They don't know, they can't hear it. They can't hear it. You can't hear that. You have to work on that. It's actually something you have to work on. Meditation is the way to do it. So, I don't know, 20 minutes in the morning, sitting down in quiet. You can use a timer. Oh, 20 minutes. Everything I can't do is 20 minutes. 20 minutes. The magic is 20 minutes. Or you start with 10 minutes. Make it consistent. Every single morning, you get up in the morning, you like have your bathroom time. Not a long time, just a quick <laughs> And then you come and you sit on your, in your meditation spot. And you set your timer for 10 minutes and you just sit and breathe and close your eyes or whatever. And if thoughts come up, that's fine. What you're doing is preparing a space so you can receive new grooves because you have to create those grooves. And if you don't do work on it now, it's only going to get worse. Right, exactly. They will widen and thicken and you will just become accustomed to listening to them. And the more you listen to them, the less, the less, and less, and less. Okay? So start working on it now. Okay, so try that. Yeah. So we have a question from Alexis. Um, Alexis Atkinson, and she sent us her picture so you can see what she looks like. Oh my gosh, she's a. Hi! Oh, you're Alexis from here! You were sitting right here! Oh, hi, Alexis! Why is she sitting here? She, I saw her, she was here with her mom one day at a show. Anyway, hi Alexis. Hi Alexis. So, um, she says she came across something similar to a work she's finished, and it was written by someone more respected than her. Um, she says she, feel like, she feels like networking with them would make her liable for what she assume is, assumes is plagiarism. Should she network with them? She was recommended to network with them, but uh, she, wanted to, she wanted to just sort of ask. So she wrote something, mm -hmm. and then she found something out there already written, like what she wrote. Similar to what she wrote, yes. Okay, but she didn't know it before. You didn't know it before. No, you're not plagiarizing that. You know. So, um, and then it was someone told her to hang out with this person. Yeah, she met them. Oh. And and then it was suggested that she network with them, but she's afraid that she'll be accused of plagiarizing. To network to what end? Does she just say? Like, network for what? Like, like, I don't know. Anyway, so ask us, so let's just, why? How can this person help you? Is it just GP, like, they're fun to hang out with, or, you know what I mean? Um, you can also tell them when you meet them, hello, I wrote a play or wrote a song or a book or whatever, it's kind of like yours, so if we get to know each other, don't think I copy. You know, you can say, put that right out there, you know? That can help. Yeah. Um, as long as it's not me, I'll be curious. Uh, I don't know, but to what end? I'm curious. Why is this person a good person for her to network with? Okay? And we'll, and we'll come back. Just back. Answer, answer that and we'll come back. Hello! Hi! Hi, it's Leafy. It's Leafy! Hello! Last time I saw you, we were going like, to um, somewhere fabulous. Like, I just came back from India. You just came back from India. You were going, like, I'm going somewhere beautiful. He's huge. He's this big. He's four. He's like, hi, Riti, how are you? I mean, I usually bring him, but, you know, I didn't bring him today. He's generous. He was almost as tall as me. I know. Now he's, any, any day now, he's going to be like, you know. So my question is, after you write the shitty show, So Riti has this question, after you write the shitty, shitty, bang, bang draft, what do you do? So, um, 
you, so you take a day off when you're done, right? You take a whole day off and do something nice. That's important. It doesn't have to involve spending a lot of money for buying things you don't need, right? But it should be something that you enjoy. Okay, so you do that. And then you read over the draft all the way through, okay? Without rewriting as you go, just read it through and ask yourself, what is scene by scene, assuming it's a play or a screenplay or whatever, scene or a novel, even scene by scene, what is this scene trying to do? Am I doing it here? You know? Okay? And then you can think, what is the whole story? Is it kind of flowing? Okay, so you've started the rewriting process by asking those questions, right? Uh, I mean, so now this is like my personal, my personal, I don't finish a shitty, shitty, bang, bang draft and then go looking for a collaborator, someone to help me fix it. No. I don't do that. Because I feel like, I mean, I, I eventually, sure, I'm working with people, I'm working with book editors, I'm working with uh, dramaturgs and directors and all that kind of stuff, right? Producers and stuff, but I don't, because if I'm rushing out to them with my shitty, shitty draft, what I'm saying without saying it is, I don't know how to fix this. I don't know what I'm doing. Help me. Well, you help me, Chloe, fix my play. Right? Right? And what you need, what you mostly need, is to know that you can do it. You can do this. So you wake up in the morning and say things like, I can do this. I just like I wake up and go, I can do this. I can write this. I know how to write this. I'm going to do it. Say that. Instead of like, I don't know how to do it. You know what I mean? That's like, or like, I'm really good at what I do. I'm a really good writer. Why don't you just try saying that, Brett? Just say that to yourself. You don't have to like, announce it on Twitter or whatever we're on right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Howl around, howl around. Brett's a really good writer. He really is. <laughs> no, he's not. No, I'm not. No, I'm waiting for you to say that. No, but... You know, you just say that. You start saying those kinds of things. It sounds really kind of corny or whatever. But so you say those kinds of things. I can do this. I can do this. And you read the draft and you, you've taken notes now. What is this scene doing? What is it trying to do? And how can I make it better? Okay? And then after you've done maybe another draft or another draft even, then maybe you talk to a friend about it, show a friend the text. Like that. Then you bring a chat and go seeking drama church or help. And all that. Because then what it does, you're giving yourself like a vote of confidence. And that's so important in the arts. You know? Instead of a vote of lack of confidence. So do you distinguish between what is it doing and what should it be doing? Like, do you? Well, um, what do I want it to do? What does it need to do? What does the screenplay need right here? I mean, Jane needs to tell him that she's leaving, you know, because X, Y, Z. Eh, it doesn't really happen. You know what I mean? So what is the what is the screenplay need? What is the play need? What is the novel need right in this scene? Okay? Does that, does that clarify? So it's not like what should it do? I mean, it's kind of all those things at once, right? So I really think you like write a couple of drafts, two or three, and um, then show it to people. That doesn't mean like you can write two or three drafts, you come in here and you talk to us about it. Like, hey, you know, I got a problem with the character, blah, blah, and we can talk to you about it, but we are not going to take your pages and look at them and render judgment. The, the act of rendering judgment in the early days resides in you because you know. one-woman show, and those helping me put it on think I should reach out uh, and see about a mentoring or sort of sharing inspiration. But she thinks it's a bit more of a confidence thing. She feels like her work is no longer good enough because somebody more powerful and well-connected has something seemingly similar to say. Yeah. 
trying to think because Alexis sat here a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about she started something and then she stopped it and she started something. Is that true, Alexis? I mean, I don't know. She was, here, she was here in December and you told her that she had a week to finish something. Right. Because she kept like starting something and stopping and starting something. So everything I believe, everything you're saying to be true, Alexis, but maybe also you're blocking yourself. You're finding a way to not feel good about what you're doing. Even though you've already finished something and you're happy with it, you're finding a way to not feel good about it. Um, so, because, you know, if we look far and wide enough, there's always somebody who's also saying something like kind of what we're saying. Something, something. I mean, there's, or, or our mother isn't going to like the play, or our grandmother's going to maybe have a heart attack because we wrote about that. Or our lover's going to leave us, or whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, there's always a reason to, to not write something. So should she meet with the, should she network with the person then? Because you, because you're going to feel, are you going to feel better by networking with this person? This is my question. Go where it's warm and do what makes you feel really good. So if you're going to network with this person and feel worse, because they've already kind of like shot your law for you, excuse my language, or not, excuse you know what I'm saying? Then don't meet with them, Alexis. Like stay home and do your white writing. You know? That's what I would suggest. Don't meet with them. You don't need to meet with them. I don't think you need to meet with them, quite honestly. Like, who is it, like Edward Albee? You're gonna go and meet with Edward Albee because he like wrote a play like yours. You know what I'm saying? Don't meet with Edward Albee, as wonderful as he is. I mean, he's cool, but stay home and do your work and get your confidence building up, like you said to Riki, from inside. You know, confidence, it's an inside job. Get the confidence going from the inside. Surround yourself with people who love you and who aren't afraid to tell you. Come back here. Come visit us. Carol. Yeah, just a comment to this. I have been five chapters into a novel. I was nine chapters into a novel. I read something, or saw something published weekly, it was, that sounded awfully like what I was doing. Right. And uh, so I, I had that feeling that you're having now. But what turned out was, it made me go more deeply into my own story, and it came out a much better for me. Because I used that as inspiration to do better. See? See, Carol's smart. I gotta say. Uh, Carol's smart. Carol got tricks and tips. I was like, use shit for fuel. This is what I said. I'm sorry. That's, a, that's not, I'm sorry. But, you know, okay. use use that that weird fear thing for inspiration. Use shit for fuel. I mean, it worked for, what's his name? Timothy McVeigh. But, you know, that's what he blew up over on the sea with. For life. So, it's time. And I just said, I just said it's like getting to that point where we have to go. Is it time? We have to wrap up? Yeah, we got to tell them about next week. Okay. What's happening next week? <laughs> We're here again next week, and you guys have been great. Thank you, thank you, we love you, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.